Well, good evening, everyone. This is Expresso Faith Bible Study. We are excited that you are joining us tonight. If you are listening live and any of those that are listening to the replay, thank you for listening. Every Monday night at 7 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, we get together to simply study the Word. Um, Our charge from the Lord was to study the life of Jesus and we have gone through uh, the Gospels of Mark and Matthew, and now we are in the book of John and the Gospel of John. If you ever want to catch up with our studies or hear what we've done already in the past, you can always connect with us on YouTube, and all you need to do is just simply put Espresso Faith, E-S-P-R-E-S-S-O, Faith, Uh, two words in the search field, and you will pull up all of our previous Bible studies. Also, if you ever have questions or concerns or feedback, requests by us, uh, prayer requests, anything like that, you can always send us an email message to www.espressofaith at gmail.com, and Espresso Faith is all one word, um, at gmail.com. So we always like to open up our Bible study in prayer. So I'm going to turn over um, this time to Dad Stanley so that he can open us up in prayer. Amen. Father, we thank you for the day you've made. We rejoice. We're glad about it. We won't change our mind because you won't change your mind. There's a purpose. There's an intent. There's a plan. There's a way that you have for us, and there's a path you've chosen for us before our mother's womb and before the foundations of the world. There's a path of righteousness for your name's sake. And so we are excited about the fact that we have a relationship with you, that we're not just going through statutes and judgments and testimonies. We're not just doing things ritualistically and religiously, Father God, but there's a relationship you want with us. And this was the problem you had with your, with your people in the Israel in the Old Testament, the problems. They wanted things. They wanted objects. And you wanted to be able to talk to them person to person and face to face. But they wanted a king, and they wanted Moses to talk to them. Father, we want to know you. And we are thankful, Lord Jesus, that their hands have handled of the word of life, that their hands have handled of he who was in the beginning with the Father, that their hands have handled he who transcends time, he who came into time in a body of flesh made for him to redeem mankind. And we likewise have an opportunity to be involved with and have a relationship and have personal, intimate encounters with he who was and is and is to come. And that's Jesus, the Word made flesh. And as we're learning over here in St. John, the same was in the beginning with with the Father, that is Jesus. And, Father, we just are excited about being able to transcend the things that are common to our senses. We're being able to transcend uh, and use our faith to access the invisible, almighty, everlasting Father, and we're able to do this through the flesh of his Son. We go into the most holy place. We go into the most intimate, um, the most intimate proximity where you are and where you abound. And we are there to bless your name. We are there to hear from you. We are there to know you better because you're the only one that can encourage us, Father, because sometimes our senses in this everyday life and in these space suits of a body, we're challenged. But, Father, God, I thank you that we can steal away. We can go into, our, we can go into this most holy place and we can access you, and we can hear from you, and we can be encouraged by the comforter that's on the inside. And so as we continue to study your word, Lord Jesus, uh, we are just excited about continuing to know you better, about getting to know you better, about how you're not hiding things from us, but you're hiding Thank things you for Lord. us. And you're revealing yourself to us even now as we study and open up this book. We bless you, and we honor you, and we invite you. We honor you now, Father God, as we engage in this time of sharing in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Dad. Stanley, you must still be sore from last week. I I must admit, if you did not listen to a certain noble man on YouTube last week, I am still full from um, last week's study. It was so, so, so rich. It was like eating. uh, One of my favorite popcorns is uh, Garrett popcorn. It's very, very rich. (laughs) And that's what I felt like I just, just had, got full off Garrett popcorn. So I, I'm still in overflow thanks to um, the moderators and the study from last week. So, again, if you didn't get to listen to it, it was a tail end of John 4, but we, we kind of touched on uh, a subject that we had been uh, 
studying for the past couple of weeks about the water and the blood, and Dad Stanley put an amazing bowl, big juicy Christmas bowl on it, um, and just resolved that it was Jesus' high, high priestly ministry through the water and the blood protocol. And that Jesus was ordained, past tense, um, to cause us to be overcomers and to be cleansed and washed and washed clean through the blood and the watershed, the water and the bloodshed of Jesus Christ. So it was so, so good that, uh, again, it was, it was just amazing. So if you didn't get to listen to it, please do so. We wrapped up the study last week talking about a certain noble man. And we all agree that um, healing wasn't a feeling. It is not a feeling. It's a, it's a byproduct of the manifestation of God's power through healing and that, you know, receiving anything from God by faith is a condition of your heart and a condition of your mind. And what we saw in um, that certain noble man was that he went to God for himself he didn't ask anybody else to do it. He did it and received for himself and did not physically see anything. He received a word from Jesus that his son was healed, and he walked that thing out by faith. So uh, what the certain noble man did, and one point we want to drive home is that he knew it and he acted like it was done. That was one of the points that Sherry made last week. You have to know it and you have to act like it is done. Uh, because God knows our name, and um, out of the abundance of the heart, our mouth will speak. So we have to also say it as, a, as according to Romans 10. So that was the tail end of John chapter 4. Um, so I wanted to make sure no one had anything else that they wanted to touch on, highlight, um, to finalize John chapter 4 before we moved it to John chapter 5. Sounds like all minds are clear. Okay, so moving into John chapter 5, one of the things that I wanted to just touch on to open up, uh, and, I, and I'll open up the floor in a second, is uh, what we saw in John 4, the telling of John 4 with the nobleman, and what we're about to see uh, with this uh, a certain man that was healed of an infirmity, infirmity uh, is the word certain. And I wanted to clarify that um, for those that are listening and, and maybe those that don't understand, when you see that word certain in, in Scripture, that that's a real person. That's an actual, very specific person and not a fairy tale. So we know that the Bible is true and it's accurate and it, it, it always confirms itself. But when you see the word certain, Anywhere in scripture, they're talking about someone that this actually, this is an actual documented um, instance. And I don't even like to use the word story because it, it confuses people, but this is something that actually happened. So we open up John uh, chapter 5 with um, uh, verse 1, and it's saying, after there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem, and he was in Jerusalem, and there was a, um, a sheep market and a pool called Bethesda that had five porches. And I want to pick up at verse 3 where it says that there was a great multitude of impotent folk, blind folk, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. And this, I got kind of stopped at this verse, and I wanted to open up the floor because I couldn't really gather whether this was a God-ordained thing that was happening or if this was just, um, you know, some sort of uh, perversion going on as far as this healing was concerned. Because it doesn't necessarily say, it does say that an angel went down at a certain season in verse 4 into the pool and troubled the water, and whoever was there was made healed, was made whole when they stepped in. So was this um, a ritual 
that was God of God? What say you? I thought it might be um, them discipling um, the people down there. Would that would, would would that be or no? I thought maybe this is a, a form of uh, them going down there to witness to the people mm-hmm. in that area. What whatever they're into, they were. Mm-hmm. Going down there, being a part of it, no. Well, I mean, what I can gather from scripture is that it did say that an angel went down at a certain season into the pool. So, so any time that I see multiple of people down there, and they're going down there to heal the people down in that in this pool. When I see angel came down, went down, to me that is a, you know, that's an angelic host. That's an angel. Right. And so I don't think there was physically people healing. I mean, the people went down to be healed, but I don't. I'm mm -hmm. I'm, I'm saying, is this what um, the disciples were doing, going down to? Um. Can, can I be heard? His disciples, or was it yeah. just Jesus? No, it was. No, um, it wasn't was disciples. Down. Yeah, it was. It was. Um, just to give a little background, I know what you 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 think that it was the disciples that were going down to like minister to people, like because you see the word because multitude. Jesus, Jesus was showing them the the people and and going amongst them to um to heal them in this in this pool. Well, this was already a practice that was happening. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, yeah, this yeah. wasn't something. It's a practice, mm-hmm. that, it's a, it's a practice okay. that happened with the three festivals. Right. So okay, the, okay. You know, the Jewish males had to come to Jerusalem to do this, I'm going to call it a ritual, traditional or whatever you want to call it, but they had to do this like washing every during the three festivals. And this mm-hmm. is the festival shelters, I believe. So you're mm-hmm. saying Jesus showed up here as part of this or to do something in the midst of this? Oh, I think it was probably both. <laughs> okay. Because he was there um because of the feast of the Jews. So it was already it was already in the midst of what the religious practices that were happening at that okay. time. You know, okay. I'm going to say this. Why are y'all talking about an angel? Went down it says that in the scripture. It says that in verse 4, Sherry. In verse 4. It says that an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then first, after the troubling of the water, stepped in was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. Um, oh, let, me, let, let me go back for just a minute. Um, Could you say Darnisha, that? Okay. No, it's, it wasn't Jesus. Um, yeah. You you were talking in the very beginning before you positioned um, the question about the pool, and you mm-hmm. said that it was a certain man, mm-hmm. noting that this is not a fairy tale. And there was something really key that came up in church on Sunday about parables too, and. Jesus did not lie. He, he, don't, he did not have lies. He didn't have illustration with lies. Even mm-hmm. parables were true events, and there were right. lessons that were veiled in the events. And I brought that piece up because even in this situation, um, he, he, we're, we're talking about the Pool of Bethesda. There really was an expectation that people had coming down to this pool that yeah. if I am the first person in, that I yep. will be made whole. In my opinion, I, I don't know enough about the background on this pool, but people had an expectation already in place that if I could just be the first person, I'm going to be healed. There's an angel. I don't know if there was some then voodoo-ish or cultic involved with this. It says an angel, but we know that, you know, 
like it's just something didn't seem quite right when I saw that word angel, and I don't know if anyone else has some background on it. I just know that I started to research um, the word Bethesda, and it meant house of grace house of mercy, and I started looking at that piece, and I just saw Jesus cut somebody off from getting into that pool, and he administered healing, which made me feel like Jesus was doing something in the face of ritualistic mess. He's always interrupting, you know, the system that man feels like they have set up for you to be healed. I just don't see God, in my opinion, in one person get healed, everybody else gone back, broke down. If you ain't making it in, sorry, see you next year. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like I just didn't Mm -hmm. see that as him. Mm -hmm. That's That's not who he is. So it says for an angel went down and troubled the water. I I don't know if this was, you know, it could have been, you know, a dark angel. I don't know. It just didn't seem right mm-hmm. to me. Um, I don't know if someone else got something. I have something around a certain man, but I didn't want to um, get off your point if somebody else has something. So this certain man, every time he goes to get in the water, someone gets in there before him, and they get healed, and he doesn't. And he's right. been well, waiting for all these years. Yeah. And so, 38 so years. Yeah, so at this point... Can y'all hear me? We can, but I don't think mom can. Hello? Uh, Let me get my phone up a little higher. Okay. I can hear you. Okay. The Amplified kind of makes it plain. It it says an angel of the Lord went down into the pool at appointed seasons and stirred up the water. So the first one to go in after the water was stirred was healed of his disease. Like... Mm-hmm. I think because there were things that they, I mean, there were little things that they had to do, just like when we talked about the priestly behavior, how they had to cleanse themselves before they dealt with the, the sacrifice and then how the sacrifice was to be prepared and how they were to kill the sacrifice. I think there were these little things that they did at certain appointed times of the year that had involvement from the Lord. And I, and mm-hmm. I would like to think that Jesus, noticing this one man sitting there, um, I would like to think that it was his way of showing that this is not how it's going to be at all. Mm-hmm. Permanent. Like, Clearly. There is a new thing coming, and it's coming through the works that I'm doing, through what I'm doing. And yeah. But I'll let y'all go from there. But I think that's what, that's what I believe. I believe that there was this, this, this season of things, kind of like there was establishments of how you're to do certain things, the men come down. Blah, blah, blah. I just think that it was an angel of the Lord that was stirring up this water for those to get healed. That's, that's what so, I believe. No, so apparently just one person Jesus, to get healed. So could we say Jesus came, down, came and changed it to where everybody can be healed rather than one person being healed of this water in this pool? Another yeah, I think he came and, and, and changed the whole thing. Yeah, he uh, okay, so we can we can kind of say that he just kicked over a sacred cow. Right. That's what I okay. That's what Which I Which is what he's been doing. <laughs> That's what he's been doing. So this okay. is just mm-hmm. another instance of him saying, yeah, this there's not only th- this is it's a trailer. This, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a movie trailer. <laughs> a it's a movie trailer. Like his way, it's his way of flipping the script. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Kind of makes you yeah. wonder. Interesting. Kind of makes you wonder how selfish that is for the angel to trouble the water and only one person get healed after doing that, you know, and all these people showing up and only one person get it. Kind of. You know, I don't know if the word selfish like ties in. It goes back to when the law was given to. Remember, all of those things pointed back to your need for a savior. You know, if I'm if I'm breaking my neck, and I looked at the pictures online, I've never been to Israel, but I looked at the pictures on, online. There's five alcoves, or like they call mm-hmm. them porches, porches that surround uh-huh. it. By the time I, I I don't have to be sick. By the time I just got down to get in the pool, I probably you know I've been and broke my neck or broke a leg trying to get down that thing. But I was looking at it, and I thought to myself, 
it, it was designed, if you've gone through all that trouble to be the first to get in there, it's like some got to be better than that. You know what I mean? Like I'd be seeking God. Like it's got to be, we need a savior. It's got to be something better than this. This cannot be who you, this is it. No, it can't be. We need some, we need, we need something else. And I just remember it was the highlight, the need for a Messiah, a need for a savior. You're not going to keep the law. You're not going to keep all of these rules and regulations. It's not going to be right that one person get healed when the water get troubled. So I don't know if it was, I, that's why I don't think the word selfish is, 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 is appropriate here. I just think it just enhanced the need for God, we need a Savior. We need Jesus. Yeah, I mean, and also Jesus only healed that man, right? Yeah, he did. And so yeah. that was a single action that he did for one person as well. But it was just out of the box thinking, out of out of the box of the the ritualistic practice that was happening in that day. Mm-hmm. That he was you know, really, you know, the point I, he was trying to drive home. I don't know if I could say selfish, or I would say the limitations of what was capable in terms of their belief before Jesus' death, like before even his mm-hmm. life. Like the limitations were that I don't be the first one in this school. <laughs> like that, that was a limitation of hope during that period. That's what I think. Yeah. This is such and the a other... limitation of, you know, mm-hmm. hope. Good Lord. Right. And it could have been, honestly, that that one important man that had this infirmity for 35 years said exactly what 38 years said exactly what Siobhan just said. It got to be a better way. It got to be better than this. Where is Jesus? I I need a better way. Uh Uh-huh. Not only that, but but remember, John the Baptist's message was the kingdom of God is at hand. The kingdom of God is at hand. That's the same message that Jesus said. The kingdom of God is at hand. So when he comes around, he's demonstrating. Hey, guess what? Yeah. That 38 years and being the fastest running and all y'all just jumping the pool, that's, that, that methodology is over now. <laughs> the kingdom of God has come. Yes. Yeah, and, and there had to be faith in that man. To tie in what we talked about last week, Jesus will respond to faith. That's right. Well, that's you know what's interesting? I'm going to go back to something Sherry said. She was talking about the limitation of hope, and I know I'm skipping ahead a little bit. You had them haters kind of hovering around watching what Jesus was doing as usual, and they were critical, and they were looking for a way to, you know, to trip them up or how you break in the law. And they said, you, he's, it's unlawful for him to be carrying his bed on the Sabbath. Like, he, mm-hmm. he not supposed to be doing any healing on the Sabbath. And then, they, you know, it's unlawful for him to be carrying a bed on the Sabbath. And I thought, so not only, and I wrote in my margin, not only limited spiritually, okay, but you'll keep somebody in bondage physically. I mean, it impacted every area of life. What you mean I can't carry my bed? I can't be healed? I can't be whole? On today, I gotta be one more day notice, on crutches. They, they they put that on everybody else. Now I'm sure if that happened to them, they'd be the first one want to be ill, no matter what day. It I is. know you right, Ma, because they're a bunch of hypocrites. But I would have taken that bed and threw it at them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a dirty mattress. Come a on, mattress. And right on them, like what? Who's in the chicken? <laughs> so Siobhan, <laughs> right Siobhan was re- referring to verse ten. Of, of chapter five, just if you wanted right. to refer back, that was um, that. Mm-hmm. John so five me, verse ten. Mm-hmm. Go ahead, Sherry. Again. Let's jump back again. I, I think it's so interesting that Jesus singled out this one man and mm-hmm. he asked him a really specific question. <laughs> so Would you like to get healed? This is a yes mm-hmm. or no speaking question, and he answered mm-hmm. with, "I can't, sir." I'd have been looking mm. at this man like, if you ask him the question, and it really, it's really a yes or no question, I wouldn't have an excuse for you. I'd be like, 
Yes. And it's just mm-hmm. amazing that his response was wrapped up in what he's been dealing with for 38 years. Because that's his identity. You're right. Nobody helped me get in this pool. Instead of just saying, yes, I would like to get in. <laughs> like, but, just, but you know what? Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Sherry. Go ahead. No, he I mean, I like that you any, He, he wasn't, wasn't aware of any other methodology. Right. Jesus is yeah. bringing mm-hmm. new methodology on board. I thought about that. I was going to say that. That's the he, truth. he spoke, you know what else I thought? He spoke, the, he, spoke, he spoke the obstacles. You know, Jesus said, do you want to become well? And you know what? I'm not trying to be funny. You say it's a yes or no answer, but you ask some people today, and they like being sick. <laughs> they like the attention that comes with being sick. They, they like talking about that. No, I'm just saying it's a very valid question that Jesus asked, and, it's, and you think it's a straightforward, of course, why would I be here trying to struggle to get into a pool? It's some people want to be in the situation they, they're in. Some people do. And not only that, but what the response of the religious leaders was, it shows they wanted to keep their religious, yes. their religious order more so than yep. see a miracle of somebody be healed because that's what means most to them, their religious order, despite your bondage and sickness. Exactly. We need so, dependent so me, people around us, broke down folk around us. Uh, you, you're right. So, so let me add one other piece to this, just to kind of to rock the boat or, or not. Um, <laughs> you know, one of the things that I said earlier is that Jesus saw faith in him, and then, you know, we hear right. what, what came out of his mouth. However, if he responded and said, I don't have anybody to put me in the water, I, I don't have, I can't move, why was he still there? So that had to be his faith to just be there showing up, yeah. just to physically be there unless he just couldn't move. But What's the alternative, that, though? That, right, but that, that could have been the faith that Jesus needed or saw mm-hmm. to heal that him. That seed, that little mustard the seed. The seed, yeah. the seed mm-hmm. to show up, just to be there, even you know, though he I knew like, he didn't have anybody to put him in the water. Bernisha, I like that you said that. Oh, go ahead. I was going to say, I like, I, like that you, I like that you said that because you get a lot of times people, and, I, you know, I mentioned that Bethesda means what? House of mercy house of grace, and the church is a house of mercy, house of grace. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. a lot of times people show up at the house of God with an expectation, with a press, and they leave disappointed in God, disappointed that, oh, I'm still going away on crutches, or I'm still didn't get my healing. They, they, weren't, they don't continue in that press and continue in that. They don't have, they, or they, or they, they don't keep showing up with the expectation, I'm getting my healing today. They don't understand, you know, maybe the revelation that Christ is a healer. It is a finished work, but they are, they, they, are, they still keep showing up, you know. There's some people that just give up, and they don't ever mm-hmm. receive. But he saw, I'm, I'm, I'm coming, I'm coming. I got it. It's 38 years I've been in this. It's coming. It's something that's got to change. Yeah, yeah. Someone else has something to add? Well, I'm thinking, um, and I just might want to read a little bit. Uh, five, uh, let's see, five, six, okay? Mm-hmm. Six verse. When Jesus, this is amplified. When Jesus noticed him lying there helpless, knowing that he had already been a long time in that condition, he said to him, mm-hmm. you want to become well. Are you really in earnest about getting healed? Be able to answer, yes, sir. And he gives, gives him his explanation, okay? Then in the eighth verse, Jesus said to him, get up, pick up your bed, sleeping pad, and Action. walk. Instantly the uh-huh. man became well, recovered his strength, picked up his bed and walked, okay? Jesus didn't say be healed. He didn't say be whole. He didn't say be healed in my name. He said, get up, pick up, pick up your bed. It's almost, you know, don't get me wrong, I'm not suggesting that this is a one-on-one here, but it's almost like he got tricked into being healed. I don't think it was so much an outstanding demonstration of the man's faith or anything else. It's almost like he got tricked into being healed. Get up. But if you can get up, maybe that's an indication that you heal. And if you look at verse number, let me see, hmm. verse number, uh, verse number nine, 
Instantly the man became well, yep. recovered his strength, picked up his bed, and walked, okay? Instantly he became well. So he was healed. The fact that he was able to give up indicated he was healed. But this, that's what this indicates. He, he was well, he recovered his strength, picked up his bed, and walked. And then here's Jesus, uh, I guess it's the 14th verse. He says, after when Jesus found him, because the man didn't even know who, who healed him, because the Pharisees interviewed him. Hi, did you, what's going on here? You got your bed around. You know, it's almost like, again, oblivious to the miracle, you walk around with your bed, you're doing something that violates what you're supposed to do on the Sabbath. All right? Mm. And, uh, and by the way, who, you know, how did this transformation happen? I don't know. I don't know how it happened. He didn't do it in his name. He didn't tell me in the name of Jesus be healed. But the 14th verse says, afterwards, when Jesus found him in the temple, he said to him, see, you are well. See, he's like, I told you to get up. Well, you know what? You was up. But the only reason why you was up is because you got well. But then it's almost mm-hmm. like Jesus says, see, you are well. Look at you. I'm reading 14th again. Mm. Afterwards, when Jesus found him in the temple, he said, see, you are well. Now stop sinning or something worse may happen to you. So, <laughs> you know, things, we, we, we minister Jesus. in certain ways. You know, oh, sometimes mm-hmm. we say in the name of Jesus, sometimes we say, come out. You know, come out. Yeah. You know, they tell me if you go to hospitals, you ministry in certain hospitals or you work with certain chaplains, they don't want you to use the name of Jesus. But we got, we got authority. We may not always say in the name, in the authority. Let me seal it with the blood in the name of Jesus. Well, you we know might who just you are. utilize our authority and say, get up. Get up. Pick your, pick your bed. You know better. Pick that bed up. Hey, oh, brother, you okay. You, see, you, you, you better be led you, doing you, that you, or you're going to get put out the hospital. You. you see you here? Look right. at you. Now, don't go sin no more. Be led. Be led. Yeah, you have to. Everything, everything is led under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. And, you know, we know that there are times when I've, I've, I've seen people literally slap folks. And, they, you know, that's just how it goes. So it is all, it all, it's all under the inspiration of, of Holy Ghost. Yes. Not all the time. You know well, what? it should be. That's what I'm saying. It should be. It should be. Yeah. Let me give one more example. It'll be quick. There was a situation. I'm not going to call any names, but there were some circumstances going on in a house, and some witches were trying to control this man's house. One of them was living with him, and the other one was outside the house who happened to be the parent of the witch. An and, accomplice. Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm, I'm being real <laughs> succinct, real to the point. I was involved with this brother praying, and he told me about the situation. And I believe it was a setup by the Holy Ghost. I believe it was set up by the Lord. This witch called my house, and guess who answered the phone? Sister Glenda. Uh-oh. And Sister Glenda said this. <laughs> when the witch started talking to gain allegiance, alliance, okay, I know what she's trying to do. When the witch started talking, after the witch finished, Glenda didn't say in the name. She didn't say in the authority. She said, get out of that house. And you know that person got out of that house and then told my friend, whose house he was trying to take over, actually, told my friend, I don't know why I got out. <laughs> I had this thing made. I had you set up. Me and my mama had this thing set up. And and Glenda didn't say in, in my name or in the name of Jesus. She just said, get out. It was like that man. Get up. Look at you. You healed. <laughs> yeah, we good. got authority. We got authority. Yeah, I was going to say, how about to say, in the, if there's nothing wrong with declaring your position in Christ, but when you in Christ, it's almost redundant to say in the name. <laughs> you are in him. You are in him. You are a new creation reality. You're in him. You speak. If you say come out, if you say get out, like Ma said, you got to go. And he's in so you. Everybody don't, uh, exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Got to go. But, yeah. but the thing about mm-hmm. it in the right. scripture, you don't want to get sons of Eva talking about in the name of right. else. Seven sons of Skeva. Right. right. You get jacked up right quick. Get out. But but if you notice, <laughs> Jesus told him to walk away from your sin, so no, nothing else worse will happen. Now now look at look at this verse fifteen. He says his knucklehead went and told the Jewish leaders who healed him. You know, like 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 he gonna like well, he man, 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 man. 
like that. Yes, and, you did. And, and these oh, and yeah, these yeah. De- and these devils, they gonna start trying to persecute Jesus. Bring it on is what I say to the, the Jesus would say. Bring it on. I got something for you. Okay. But I, I just thought that was interesting. You know, here he got healed by Jesus, and he still. Uh, sewing a little discord. Well, they were, they were the he was testifying, people. Mama. He was right. testifying. Is that what we call it? <laughs> I, I'm he with was, Mom. He was proclaiming. Gonna, he was proclaiming. I'm, uh-uh, I'm with Mom. I call it uh, <laughs> being a uh, working working with the working with the uh, police. I know I'm joking. I'm, I'm saying he was working for the wrong side. I'm gonna say it that way. Yeah, he. he I, yeah, I, I just see, I, he knew I that they were about because they. No, they checked him about carrying his bed on the Sabbath. Do he not remember? They would have right. they would have thrown him back down on top of that mattress if they could, and he's going back with four reports on Jesus. Yeah, right. So, I mean, who else was he gonna say healed him? The angel? Uh, you hush? You know, he I'm hush when when Herod asked. Listen, listen when Herod asked the um. What was it, the um the stargazers, the astrologers? Come on, the wise men. Come on back round this way so I know which way y'all came from. Oh, all right, we're going to come back and let you know where we <laughs> No, they didn't stop right. it. They like, we're going the monkey way. You ain't got to go that way. <laughs> he was doing the most. <laughs> all I'm saying is that. So that nothing worse will happen to you. He told him that. And, I mean, you know, he knew that these people didn't want him to be healed on the Sabbath. He knew that. But, but Yes, he I, I agree with that. The other shoulder. He got that little devil on the other shoulder to say, now go over there and tell him what happened. Because he was serious. Yeah, boy. <laughs> Jeez. I mean, you know, he could have just shut up and went on about his business and, 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 and thank the Lord and sin no more and I got my healing. But he got his Well, all I'm saying is that for the devil. he wasn't the first person to do this, especially right. Jesus didn't specifically tell him not to tell anybody, but there are instances where Jesus told told people, do not say nothing. Don't tell nobody nothing. Don't tell people I healed and you. And, and, and they went back and told anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing about it is, it's similar to the blind man, the one who got healed right. from his mother's womb. He was blind, who did sin. Nobody sinned. And then when they ask him, well, who healed you? And the parents said, well, let the boy talk. He, you know, he's grown. he tell you. And, um, right. you know, it's, uh, it, it, you know, I just, I just see that as the religion versus this new order that's coming. And actually, Absolutely. He, just, he just reported to the religious leaders. They asked him, who did this? I don't know. But then Jesus showed up again. Hey, hey, you all right now, huh? Don't send no more. We want to keep you healed. Stay the boss in the church. He went back and forth to the boss in the church. Right. Oh, my goodness. So, I, you know, this is better than the, as the world turns, young and the restless. Right. I mean, this is, this is real life. <laughs> This is real life of a certain man. So I want to tie back around. Uh, Siobhan, you want to elaborate something on a certain, certain man? Uh, I want to give you an no, opportunity to do that before we close. Uh, no, you already I already made my point on certain man when I was talking about, um, hang on one second, when I discussed that it, it not Jesus, Jesus did not tell lies and fables. It right, was right, right. a fairy okay. tale. It was, so I made that point. But there was something around um, him talking about the obstacles that he, I don't know we're coming to a close, but he talked about the obstacles. He had a lack of support. No one can help me down into the pool. I don't have anyone to help me. Mm-hmm. In fact, people stepped over him. What, what verse is that when he That's said true. people stepped over him? I mean, they was cutthroat. Um, he says in verse 7, so this impotent man, this this. The disabled man answered him, sir, I have no one that can help me. There's no man that can help me when the water is troubled to put me in the pool. But when I'm coming, another step down Mm -hmm. before me. So people stepping Mm -hmm. over you to get down in the pool. And I just saw when you were talking about, I think maybe dad was the one who talked about in verse 6, when Jesus saw him uh, lying there and knew that he had been a long time in that condition, you know, will you be made whole? Jesus has compassion for what we're going through, okay? 
Like mm-hmm. 38 years, my God, you know, like yeah. screaming on your insides, and there's a press. There was a lack of support. Nobody could help him. I'm thinking, where is this brother? Family, no friends, nobody that can help him get down, people stepping over him. And then you had to be the first to get in the pool. And I thought about something real simple. God is not linear. He's not linear. He's not, and, and I want to be clear about what I mean when I say linear, he's not this oh, one person, you in line, you in line, one after another. He can, jump, he, he can jump on, he can do however he will. You understand? Mm-hmm. It ain't no uh, one stage of a single, one foot in front of the other kind of thing where you in line here. He can heal everybody simultaneously. We've seen well, Jesus heal and feed great multitudes. And, and I just, just saw it as, I know he healed this one person here, but when I was reading this, he came in contact with Jesus, not man, man who stepped over him, man who required him to, you know, be in like a pecking order, so to speak. He went to him. And I just saw, like, Jesus is being the source. He sees you. He knows what you've been through. Come to him. And that, I mean, that ties into what Sherry, Sherry said last week about he knows you by name. Yes, and the other people, yes, yes. other other point okay. is that in verse 3, it said a great multitude of important <laughs> folk, blind. So even yeah, though he made a demonstration of one person, everybody saw it. Yep. Everybody that was yeah. there, they saw it too. Yep. So my question other, is, yep. I, 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 man too. I mean, Every time I read this scripture, because I've, I've been through this with different situations, but every time I read the scripture, I put in my head the image of first day at Cass Technical High School. <laughs> all these black students are standing at one door to pile dry food for like, I'm going to be the first one black children running for their lives in the street. Fuck it up, Sam. And I just keep putting that in. It was like, it was like a, a dog eating dog trying to get the first one in this pool. And like, I just, I just put, that's the image I put in my head. And it's like, this poor man can't even walk to get in the pool. I could imagine him tripping people, grabbing people's legs, trying to hold on to get dragged down. I mean, it's like, it's like okay. folks parking, parking in the handicapped spots and stuff. Running down. I have a question. And nobody had compassion. Yeah, nobody. Just like the rat race they have. I mean, kids was falling down the stairs trying to get. <laughs> the That's what I see. This okay. Like, so, so did did, did Jesus put this at, to rest? That this uh, pool that you don't have, one person doesn't have to. Um, at this particular time of the year, did Jesus put that to rest by healing? I'm sure. I'm sure that um, faith rose in that place, <laughs> uh, and our, the, because there was a demonstration of the manifestation of the power of God. And any time that there's a demonstration like that, then okay. there's a, there's mm-hmm. that's going to increase that's going to increase people's Absolutely. confidence <laughs> in, in God's power. I'm so mad Does Sherry he took it back up? to the early 90s. No, but when he stood up, like when Jesus said, stand up, pick up your mat, and walk, and instantly the man was healed, he rolled up his sleeve mat. I mean, it was like, this is you right now, this is your situation, desperation, and in an instant, there is hope, there is a change, there is healing. Go walk, get moving, get, go forth. You know, and that instantaneousness that suddenly that one second ago and 0.5 seconds later, it's a difference. You know, that's how God operates. And that's mm-hmm. the authority that he has that he's given to us, and it's a hope factor. You know, a lot of this is folk are in desperation, do not yes. have hope, do not see the light, so to speak, and I'm not going to say at the end of the tunnel, they don't see the light. Of, mm-hmm. I don't have desperation. I don't have to feel like my infirmities are who I am. I know that Jesus is a healer, and in an instant, in a suddenly, 
I can come up out of this thing better Amen. than I was before I even got this thing. Hallelujah. So, Hallelujah. Now, I do have a side note. Go ahead. A a side note, which I thought was interesting for verse 3 and 4, that they said that those two verses in majority of the manuscripts are not in there. I I, I need to research why is that. But uh, my side note says that uh, verse 3 and 4 are not in most of the manuscripts. Especially in the Greek one. That's because they keep changing the um, they keep trying to change the Bible and omit stuff. Because that's why I didn't see it at first. Because I had the New Living out, and then when I went uh, back, and when I went back and looked at it in Amplified and in King James, it was their biggest day. So I was like, huh. See mm-hmm. there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. So, Darnisha, yeah. I know you about to close. Oh, go ahead, Dad. I'm sorry. No, I just wanted real quickly. You said God is not linear. And mm-hmm. this to me is one of the most one of the most clear examples of that. In Mark three and Mark three seven there's a few verses there where Jesus is just doing miracle after miracle. At least this is what I envision. <laughs> you know, I envision mm-hmm. and I hear my pastor talking about crusades he's been in and the power of God fell here. Pow and pow and folks, pow, pow. Jesus retired his disciples to the lake and a great throng from Galilee followed him. And he told mm-hmm. his disciples to have a little boat, constant readiness for him, because the crowd was pressing hard upon him to crush him. For he had healed so many, and all who had distressing bodily diseases kept falling upon him, pressing upon him, in order that they might touch him. And the spirits, the unclean spirits, the unclean ones, as often as they might see him, fell down before him, kept screaming out, You're the Son of God! And he charged them strictly and severely on the penalty again and again. So he's, I mean, it's pow, 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 God. Folks pressing, folks reaching, folks going after him. And then so much so, telling the 21st verse, you know, and I just, I just cannot imagine Jesus. Or the 20th verse, it says, then he went to the house, probably Peter's, but a throng kept together again, got together again, so that Jesus' disciples could not even take food. And when those who belonged to him, his kinsmen, heard it, they went out to take him by force, for they kept saying, he is out of his mind, beside himself mm-hmm. deranged. And then if you jump all the way mm-hmm. down to verse 32, it says, and a crowd was sitting around. Hey, well, well, skip, excuse me, 31. It says, then his mother and his brothers came and standing outside, they <clears> sent <throat> word to him, calling for him, and the crowd was sitting around him. And they said to him, your mother and your brother and your sister's outside asking for you. And he replied, who is my mother and my brothers? And looking around the house, he said in the circle about him, he said, see, here my mother. So, I mean, you're right. Jesus is not linear. God is not linear. I mean, I'm seeing people pressing him, trying to touch him, devils being, being cast out, bam, 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 so much so that I can just imagine Jesus being kind of like in a delusion. I don't know. I won't say delusion. But they thought he was crazy. Mm-hmm. So you're right. God is not just step one. Okay, your turn. Put the little second right. in, the little, in your mouth. Drink the little juice. Nothing he did <laughs> like that. It was, it's like, that was oh, not oh, him. Oh, wow. So much yeah. mm-hmm. they, they think of Jesus. I mean, I can't imagine how Jesus was looking. You know? It's, he's lost yeah, his but mind. You know, what? you know what, Dad? That just shows, that just goes to show, like, there's more emphasis on the fact that you don't know which way your healing going to come from with the Lord. You know? You just, you yeah. just gotta have that peace and act like it's already done because you don't know what he's gonna come up here with. Hallelujah. You're trying to put put him in a box. That blessing, right. whatever he's got for you, you don't know. You don't know how it's yep. gonna come. Just expect. Just be ready. Just be ready. Yep. And just be. Mhm. Absolutely. Um, be, doing the, yeah, doing the okay. bus stop. There was a. a powerful <laughs> minister that used to come. He said, you just do the bus stop. You just keep looking because you know right. it's coming, but you you just, just got to be ready. One last thing, and I'm closing. I'm going to pass it over to Sherry uh, to close us out in prayer. Um, the man was impotent. Mm-hmm. So he got his groove back, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> Wait. Yeah. Dude. Yeah. Don't Dude. I, just, I just wanted to Dude. clarify that. Hi. Dee, I'm sorry you got to let me say this. You, I was like, okay, we closing out. Girl, you know you're flowing because I was like circling around that sin no more. And that's the worst thing. Come on, do you need to Jesus know the thing to say. Like, I see you get the simple giving him the look. Yeah, Next, 
<laughs> yes. I can do it right. right. Okay. You yeah. know my yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, thank so, you, Jesus. <laughs> but, but no, it's the truth because it's, it's when true. We talk about it, Matthew 12, said those spirits, that infirmity, that spirit will come back looking to see if it's, mm, can I come on back in and it'll be worse than it was yeah. before. That's yeah. the thing. And yeah. Jesus confirmed it there, but he talked to, we talk, We studied that in Matthew um, 12, where he, it mm-hmm. says, hey, I'm going to return to the house I left them spirits talking. We're going to go back and see if this cool wants to go back up in there. Yeah, they have conversations. We're going we're gonna to go, we're going to roll back up on them and see if we can put them down for another 38 years. Mm-hmm. And it'll yeah. be, you, you will open a door for that foolishness. So get that crazy and forget. I mean, right. I wouldn't be able to forget 38 years being on crutches, but people sometimes get a real short memory about <laughs> what it is the Lord has done for them. Mm-hmm. You know, when you yes. say that, the old, I'm hollering, yes, got a, yeah. got a loop, got, got a swerve and a swag back. Yeah, <laughs> got a Jesus, Jesus right quick, like, yeah, let me let them know right quick. <laughs> yeah. just, just so you know. Just so you know. Right. Yeah. All right. Go ahead, Sherry, and close us out in prayer. All right. Let's see. What do we got here? Make sure I get these. All right. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank and praise you for another power pack evening in the word. We thank you, Lord God, for your revelation and knowledge, God, and continue to peel back the onion of just how great you are, how multifaceted you are in the miracles that you work, in the words that you bring, and how you just bring revelation and knowledge to our spirit man so that we can operate and flow in those same gifts. We thank you right now for every person that's on the line, moderators and listeners alike, that you all are healed and whole from the top of your head to the soles of your feet, that every tissue, every cell, every organ, every system functions as God designed it to. We thank you that we have hope. Hallelujah. We have hope. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, yes. We have to operate under a bondage system, under a law system, that we're free. We're free to be. We're free to live. We're free to go out here and just share the gospel. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for the boldness to do it, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the prayer requests that come through on the line, those traveling. Keep them safe, God. Keep every uh, person riding on a train, plane, automobile, bicycle, or even walking. Hallelujah. Keep them safe, God. Have the angels and camps around them, God. Protect people's vehicles, God. Let them keep working in this weird weather we're getting, God. Protect people that are going to and fro, God, that they stay safe, God and healed, and I rebuke the flu in the name of Jesus. I rebuke sickness and illness and disease. Yes, I rebuke cancer. I rebuke back pain. Oh, I rebuke yeah. high blood pressure and high cholesterol. I rebuke any form of lupus. Yes, I rebuke any infirmities in our body in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I say we are healed and whole, and we operate in what we are designed to be. So we can carry out this gospel to the world. We got yes. work to do. Our body's going to have to get in line. Our spirits are strong. Our hearts are open. We got hope for, for what's coming. We thank you, Lord that we are able to stand in the gap for Trayvon and her family, just folks, you know, passing away. We just pray for strength for them. We pray for comfort for them, Lord. And we just thank you, Lord, that her family members, they, that they knew the Lord, that they're with you, God, and we thank you for that. Lord, we just thank you for our pastors on the line at our respective churches, God. Give them time to get before you so they can clearly hear the word of God to bring to their, their congregation for this season. We thank you, Lord, that they have strength. We thank you that they have provision for the vision that you place on the inside of them, God. Lord, I thank you surround them with godly counsel and give them the wisdom of God to continue to operate the vision. Lord, we thank you for healing for Miss Aravine Lewis. Probably messing that name up, but you know it, Lord. You know our name. We thank you, God, that whatever her need is, that it's met. Lord, I thank you that you are blessing us and blessing us in the area of finances, that you open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing that we won't have room to receive. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord, that as we go away from our call and have time in the week, God, give us some time to be able to prepare for next week. Give us time to be in your word. Give us time. Don't let our routine of life take over what you would have us to do. Keep us focused on you as we go to and fro. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 Well, we thank everyone for being on the call tonight. Again, if you want to replay any of our previous messages, you can check us out on YouTube and just type in Espresso Faith, two words, 
If there's anything we can do to support you in your walk of faith in Jesus, please don't hesitate to give us an email. Send us an email at espressofaith at gmail.com. We are here to be a service to the kingdom of God, to those that just need clarity, understanding, and encouragement in the word. So we thank you all for joining us tonight and re-listening to the replay. And we call you blessed and empowered to prosper and until next week have a good evening and the remainder of the week night have a good night love you all